Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It is Tuesday, October 19th, 2021. I am Andrew Hansen, alongside Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach. And it's opening day in the NBA, Coach. We're finally here. Can you possibly contain your excitement? Dude, man, I, I think I've wet my pants twice already. It's <laughs> it's like Christmas morning, all you know, all in one. Uh cannot believe that it's really here. And we start off with two really good games. It is it's gonna be a great year. I'm so excited because you know, Andrew, we last the last year and a half really struggling through trying to get the NBA in in a certain amount of times, less games in a bubble you know, short and summer, uh, just all the different dynamics that created mayhem. Uh, we're actually back to a real regular start to an NBA season. And it feels like it's been five years since we've had that. So I'm so excited. It really, it really does. And this is the best thing we've got so far since the pandemic is the NBA today with some fans, not in the bubble, mostly everybody healthy, ready to go, mostly vaccinated. We'll get to that as we go but we've got oh yeah like you mentioned a really exciting two game slate here we're going to help everybody get ready on DraftKings and FanDuel start this season off with a bang and we're going to introduce you to some of the ways that we do things we're going to mention the eye test the, the guys that we've scouted but we're also going to mix in some stats efficiency uh all of that so let's get after it coach let's start with Brooklyn and Milwaukee if you want to talk about these teams from a higher level uh, from last year to to make sure we're we're ready to go. That would be the the best way to start. Absolutely. Let's let's dive right into this matchup. And if you want a, a real, I'll mention it here real quickly too. If you want that oversight of all the teams, we have posted a uh, preview for the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference, where uh, I go over every team, the depth chart, and the coach, the the changes. So check that out. It is posted on YouTube and and for uh, audio on everywhere podcasts can be found. So we're going to attack this just like Andrew said. And for those of you that have been with us, I think, Andrew, this is our, like we've done three and a half seasons or so of NBA together. So uh, we're starting to get to be veterans at this together. So I'm excited to attack this season with you. I know you're doing a great job with NFL, so I appreciate you. But you know, if, you, if you're new to Coach Talk, maybe this is the first time you've seen one of our podcasts, we are unique in the sense that we are a DFS provider, but we walk that really good line between our experience, watching it, the eye test, players, their reactions, the different schemes they're running, all of the aspects behind the numbers that we feel here at Coach Talk are extremely important, but we also deep, dig deep on the analytics the numbers, the ownership, the projections, all the things that are just as important. Also, something to know about Coach Talk as we dive on to this first game, <clears throat> we, we uh, hand-build <clears throat> excuse me, hand build teams here. I'm so excited I'm choked up about it. But, <laughs> uh, you know, the 150 max entries, yes, you can use our information, put those together. But we feel the majority of people out there are hand-building lineups, whether it's one or five or, or, you know, anywhere in that range. And we're going to give you the information to help you do that. So just wanted to sort of clear that out right at the beginning. All right. <clears throat> the first game of the season, it is the Milwaukee Bucks against the uh, at home against the Brooklyn Nets. Milwaukee is a one point favorite and the over under for the game is two thirty three and a half. And, those stats or those numbers and lines are from betus.com.pa, a sponsor of ours and great place to sign up. If you sign up there, by the way, for $149, you get two free months of Coach Talk. So go to betus.com.pa if you're going to do a lot of NBA betting this season. All right. <clears throat> In that game, the implied total for the Milwaukee Bucks is 117.5. And their offensive efficiency rating this past season was fourth in the league at 116.9. Their defensive efficiency for the season as the champs, they were 12th. So uh, unusual that somebody out of the top 10 wins the championship, but 12th still very respective at 110.9. They did play at a pretty quick pace, 
and they were fifth in the in the league at 101.4. Uh, so you can expect them to keep the ball moving. They get a lot of offense from their defense. On the other side of the ball, Brooklyn, uh, their uh, their number for uh, the game 116.5. Uh, their offensive efficiency rating last year, number one, you know, when they had, even though they had Harden and uh, Durant for a decent time, uh, the two of them and Kyrie only played eight games together. So and they still were able to be the number one most offensive efficient team in the league. So they are going to score the ball. Here's where their challenge was, Andrew. And you know this very well because we talked about it. When they first made these moves, they were dead last in the league in defensive efficiency so that you know gives you some more interest uh, in the Milwaukee side but they did improve as the as the uh, playoff run came closer and they moved up to 25th nothing to be thrilled about but it's not last so that's that's an area that can be attacked and as far as pace goes they were 10th in the league uh, at 100.3 so you've got the fifth and 10th pace you've got some questionable defense specifically from the Bucks or I'm sorry, from the uh, uh, Nets. So saying all those numbers in this game, how does that equate for you, Andrew? Are you looking for this you know, to, to be a possible over the 233 and a half number? Well, I'll, I'll say that I do like this game better than the second game. I'd like to have a little bit more of my exposure here on the two-game slates, which is what we're focused on today. Uh, we also often give... Uh, full lineups for showdown slates. But for the two-game slate, I lean towards this one a little bit and the stars in this one. I do like the pace. I do like Brooklyn's lack of defense. And yes, they're they're improved. And you know, the other thing here, obviously a lot of attention on Kyrie not being vaccinated. He's out potentially for the whole season, but he was probably their worst defender, right? So if Bruce Brown soaks up a lot of those minutes, then Brooklyn will be tougher defensively. So it won't be as easy for those Milwaukee guards, but I still like this game environment overall. Excellent. Uh, do you have updated uh, injuries for this game? Well, for the Brooklyn side, we have Kyrie out, and that's that's it. Uh, on the yeah. Milwaukee side, we have some more issues. We have Bobby Portis out. We yeah. have Rodney Hood out, Ojale out, and Dante DiVincenzo out. Right. So we'll uh, we'll zero in on the usage that we think will adjust there. By the way, Coach, I do want to mention here, I've got three value plays on this slate, potential value plays okay. that I think could be game changers. So we'll get to those as we go. Um, but why don't you kick us off with Brooklyn as the visiting team without Kyrie? How do you think it's going to play out there and where are you looking for your picks? Yeah, I mean, you know, it doesn't take a, a DFS genius to say, hey, Harden and Durant are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, with Kyrie out, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, those are going to be the top two targets. You know, the, the big question on this slate, to me, of all that we're going to talk about is, do you go, I think you have to go with Harden and or Durant. I mean, I don't know how you fade both of them in this game, personally, right. especially with Kyrie out. But the, the big question is, do you go with one over the other or do you try to fit in both? And that's that's the million dollar question. You know, you, you've got Harden who's, you know, price wise, he's cheaper, a little bit cheaper than Durant yeah. uh, on DraftKings. For example, they're nine, nine for Durant, nine, three for Harden. Those are the two key guys that you go to. And, you know, it looks like their starting lineup as of now, again, not confirmed, but we're anticipating it's going to be Harden. Bruce Brown, as you mentioned, Joe Harris, Kevin Durant, and Blake Griffin. Now, off the bench, and I'd love to get some feedback here. We've, you know, we've got Paul, all veterans too, a, a bunch of these guys, man. They've been around forever, but they're solid. They know how to play. The question is, how many minutes are we going to get out of Paul Millsap, Lamarcus Aldridge, Patty Mills, Javon Carter, DeAndre Bembry, and uh, James Johnson, even? And Nicholas Claxton, the, the youngster that was coming along last year. So that's a deep bench of veteran guys that they really didn't have last year. You know, the big question that I have, are any of those bench guys playable? And I, I'll love to get your feedback. For me, you know, I'm not going there yet. I think I need to see a little bit more proof of how that rotation is going to play out 
for Nash. I mean, you know you're going to get monster minutes from Harden, Durant, Harris probably, and Brown. You know, the guy that might, you know, sit a little as Brown where you could consider some Patty Mills because he's so effective. And then, you know, Blake won't play an over an extended period of minutes, I wouldn't think, at this stage in his career, which would open the, bo- uh, the door for probably – either Millsap or Aldridge to grab some of those minutes. But I don't, you know, feel comfortable going to the bench at Brooklyn very much at all here. I think it's very simple. You you either go to me with Harden or Durant, and then you can easily mix in a Joe Harris or Bruce Brown value-wise. Bruce Brown's only 3.6, Andrew, and uh, Joe Harris is 5.8. This is DraftKings dollars. So uh, what, what do you think on that take on the Brooklyn side? Yeah, I agree. Harden and or Durant. Uh, I will have some lineups with both of them. If I had one lineup, it probably would be both of them because they just dominate the usage so much. Right. And they can feed off of each other. And I, I'm, I'm very much aligned with you on the rest of the team. Uh, I don't want to play Blake Griffin because I don't think he'll play huge minutes. I don't want to play any of those bigs off the bench because – that's the I think that's the one area on this slate that has the most uncertainty. From a NBA perspective, they've done a great job building that depth with those bigs, mostly veterans. It's almost like the Lakers of the East with yeah. all those guys. But Steve Nash is one of the guys who can really vary the rotations, and certainly he's not going to announce it. And I think it's just too risky to invest in any of those four bigs off the bench. Right. I think we need to wait and see, and I don't think we need to go there. I agree. Uh, so if I was going to play another value play for Brooklyn, it, it would be one of those guards. Uh, Bruce Brown, 3600 like you said, is a really good price for him, but he's a GPP guy for me because he can have a dud or he can you know, find the, find the hole and get a few steals and four or five layups and smash that value. But I also like Javon Carter because he's minimum price on both sites. Yeah. Again, GPP only, uh, because you do have Patty Mills. Mills more expensive, uh, so maybe maybe one of those guards as a value play in a GPP, and then Joe Harris. I don't really like that price on DraftKings, but forty three hundred on FanDuel. Once again, FanDuel never likes Joe Harris. They no. love to price him low, and it's so tempting. And again, none of the, one of those guys who can give you a dud, or like that last preseason game, he can hit seven threes. And exactly. Be a, a slate breaker. So I think we just load up on the big guys and we 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 move very delicately with any other value plays on Brooklyn. I agree. I mean, for a two game slate with just four teams, there's so many good players to pick from. So, you know, we don't really promote stacking in the NBA like we do in football and and baseball. Uh, you know, because it just you're there's only much so much blood that can come out of the stone, if you know what I mean. So yeah. You know, you, you know, to go too deep with a team of key players is is not a bad idea. I mean, once you go to three or four, now you're hoping for, you know, huge high scoring or double overtime or something where you can really, uh, you know, get those numbers in. But, you know, I'm going to I want to throw a stat at you. It's one of my favorites. I look at it every day and I'll bring up the guys that stand out each day on our podcast. And it's a defensive real plus minus. Uh, the DRPM uh, stat. I love it because it gives you a snapshot from all of last season. So it's a good sample size of a defensive rating for every player. And the reason I like it, it has given us some big takedowns in the past of who to attack and who to avoid. And, you know, granted, you get a lot of people argue like my son, for example, he doesn't like DRPM because it factors in the player's defensive rating in the system of defense that he's in. So it does take into consideration the team's defense a little bit, specifically with how that player is playing at his position. So it is a little convoluted, but it's an important number, and it's one that's worked for us. I mean, we've used that, what, Andrew, for at least three years of discussing players, right? Yep. Yeah, I, I, I'm probably closer to Dawson I, I think it can be helpful, or maybe I'm somewhere in the middle. I okay. think it can be helpful. I think at a minimum, it gives you a good feel for, is this guy an excellent defender or is he poor? Because oh. this, this, the, the numbers aren't going to lie on that. I mean, it's, 
You're not going to get right. a high rating for Kyrie. You are going to get a high rating for Drew Holiday. I mean, so it's you know, once you get more in the middle, sometimes things can get a little bit of out of, out of whack because of the rest of the team uh, propping somebody up or pushing them down. So I think, right, you know, we, we take it and we use it in, in certain circumstances. I agree 100 percent with both of you guys. I I just like it as a differentiator in a very close, you know, when you're between two guys and you're looking for that tilt. Yeah, I like this as a, a you know, third or fourth option down statistically, but there's shockers in here. And I have one for you. Okay. You're never going to believe this, but this, this is the stat. I checked it twice. Do you know who the number one small forward in the entire NBA in defensive real plus minus is right now coming into this season from last year? Uh, Chris Middleton. Would you believe it's Joe Harris? Yeah, that's that's interesting. Uh, so let's talk about that because it's a lot to unwrap and, it, and sort of what you, you and Dawson argue with me about. But in the system that they play, you know, they generally will have a shot blocking type of aggressive center in there. Uh, they had, you know, DeAndre. Now it's Blake Griffin and they're going to have LaMarcus and different guys. But in the system that they play and, you know, they generally are putting – you know, Durant on a, a really tough player. Harris ends up being a guy that gets steals and he, he gets it done. So just uh, from a statistical standpoint, he's number one at a 4.0. And if you're, if you're above three, then you've had a hell of a defensive season. So Harris has been a guy that you would think is an average defender. And here he is uh, sitting at number one. Is that blown out? Maybe. But let's, you know, let's look at it here. If you're trying to decide on a second or third guy that's your key guy in and you're going to go Middleton, okay, I wouldn't argue that. Middleton's phenomenal. But Joe Harris gets it done. He's efficient. He was number one. So, again, something to weigh. You don't have to outweigh it, but it's a real stat. I know from an analytics standpoint, the coaches look at it. And I think that it, you know, it also goes into this statistical analysis for those that that utilize optimizers to to try to spit out some lineups. So, does that downgrade Middleton a little bit? You know, Middleton is phenomenal, but I think it takes just a notch. So I wanted to mention that to you because I thought I was that was a real stunner for me. And as you mentioned, of course, you know, the 16th best point guard defensively, uh, DRPM is is Drew Holiday. So that certainly has a little bit of a sting on Harden. Is that enough to go Durant over Harden? I'm not sure, but we know Drew can defend. And the other guy that's ranked really high in this this matchup is Brook Lopez. He was the sef, seventh highest rated center and a, a, an impressive 2.56. So we know he can block some shots. You know, he has a tendency to give up some threes because he doesn't quite get out there quick enough. But from an all around defensive standpoint, uh, this is a couple of years in a row now that he went from early in his career being a poor defender who never shot a three to now his, he's almost a three and D type of center. So you talk about metamorphosis of a player. So, you know, that knocks down Blake and LaMarcus and, and maybe Millsap a little bit if they're going to get some run at center for me. But those were the three players that stood out in this game uh, as far as how it affected in DRPM. Yeah, and if you guys have watched – many of our NBA podcasts, you know that we really dive into the matchups and look at uh, stats and <clears throat> historical performance against certain defenders. So we'll do that throughout the season. Coach, let me uh, kick off the Milwaukee side here. And this is one of those pretty set opening lineups uh, from our perspective. It's going to be Drew Holiday, Grayson Allen filling in for DiVincenzo, Middleton, Giannis, and Brooke Lopez. And, you know, so that's steady. But again, it's Budenholzer. He's still at the helm, and he likes to use the bench and not push his guys too much. But this is still that that good pace game. Could be high scoring and close. So I, I would like to get some exposure to the Milwaukee side. Giannis is the most expensive guy, but I'm looking to probably play him as well. And then it's a question of do you go with Drew Holiday or Middleton? They're both much more affordable and and reasonable so you you could play them 
Uh, Drew Holiday, speaking of defensive matchups, I would think Bruce Brown would spend a good amount of time on him. I and agree. they let they let Harden uh, chase around Grayson Allen. So that will put potentially a little a little damper on him. Um, but I do want to get into the bench here because this is where we can gain a little bit of an edge with all those guys out. Portis, you know, the, the big guy being out, we got to look at who's going to get those backup minutes. And I think the two candidates are Giannis's brother, Tanasis. And here's one of my favorite value plays, Coach. Sandro, Sandro Mamu Kalashvili. He is a 6'9 lefty out of Seton Hall, a big with point guard skills. He's really agile. He'll shoot it from deep. He can, he can actually drive and pull up. He can drive and dish. Uh, I think he's got some real potential, and this is a great spot for him to get, a, get some minutes. I think he'll get you know, probably 14 minutes somewhere in there. I think he and Tanasis are likely to be in that, in that range because it is the season opener, and we know Bud is not going to push those guys to the brink. And he's minimum uh, price on both sites. Yeah. So uh, he's a potential value play. Then, of course, we've got Nawara, who's really come on here with the Olympics and preseason. He can absolutely light it up. He's minimum price on both sites. Right. Uh, and I, I, I am looking to play him some. And then I probably won't go to the likely backup guards here, George Hill, Pat Connaughton. I just like some of the other value plays better. So uh, what do you think on, on the Brooklyn, uh, sorry, the Milwaukee side? Yeah, I, great points, a great ba- breakdown there. And I will not try to pronounce that dude's name. I'm just going to call him Mamu because that's yeah, what everybody else Mamu. calls him. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding job, by the way, in, in pronouncing it. Um, you know, I like Drew Holiday a little bit, even though he's going to get some Bruce Brown because I think he will get some some uh, James Harden also. I think it'll be a mix. Uh, Grayson Allen is is the real wild card here because – he is going to get big minutes. He really is the guy they brought in to, to take this position until DiVincenzo can come back. He's 3.8, which is a bargain. And he was shooting the ball really well in the preseason. And he seems to really fit in. Uh, I think he's a great pickup for them. They also got rid of Bryn Forbes. He's back in San Antonio. So he's really the man at the two. I know uh, Noir and Hill may get a few minutes at the two, three kinds of spots for uh, respectively. But I think Grayson Allen is interesting to me at that price. Of course, Middleton, uh, you can consider. It's hard not to, to take Giannis. I mean, I talked about it in the uh, preseason shows. It just he looks to me more fit, more prepared, more ready to go, and it, which is shocking. So he normally somebody wins a championship, they sort of take the foot off the gas for a little bit. Whatever it did, the taste of winning it, uh, he looks more fit, more healthy. His foul shot looks better. That 15 to 17 foot jumper looks smooth. Um, you know, hopefully he doesn't try to start chucking threes. That gets him out of whack. But if he stays within himself, I think this could be an MVP season for Giannis. I really do. I, I love the way he looks, and I definitely want to have him here. I'm going to pair him either against Harden or Durant and just expect those guys to go back and forth like nobody's business. So I'm with you on that side. Uh, <clears throat> it's not – it. you know, one thing, Andrew, and, and this is what's bizarre, it is a, a weak center uh, two games here. When you're yep. staring at Blake Griffin, Brooke Lopez, Kevon Looney, and DeAndre Jordan, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you want any of those four guys? Well, Looney, you know, he's interesting because on FanDuel, he can be a power forward. And, of course, that's a big change this year Yeah, with some position flexibility. But you didn't mention our favorite guy who likes to get ejected, Dwight Howard, off the bench at 4000 He's the same price as DeAndre Jordan. I'm I'm more interested in him. So much grief for us last year. (laughs) Good old Dwight. Just dramatic Dwight. There was a lot of swearing going on. That's all I can say. Yeah, so uh, the first group, yeah, I don't like that much. I'd probably pick Looney if I had to out of the first four, but I I like Dwight today as a value play. And and the reason I bring that up is maybe Lopez is playable. I mean, five point nine though, I don't, I don't know. That's a lot to bite off. But, Mm -hmm. but anyway, the rest of Milwaukee, I'm with you. I don't particularly want to go to the old hat of Connaughton and Hill. Um, You know, Noir is really the wild card for me. I. 
I don't know what he's going to play. I mean, is he going to play 10 minutes? Is he going to play 25 minutes? I mean, I really don't have a clue. I don't know if I have the, the, the guts to do it, but he's so cheap and he has so much potential. Plus, if for some bizarre reason the game got out of hand either way, which it probably won't, it's a one-point spread, you know he's going to get every second of mop-up minutes, uh, and he usually eats like crazy during that time. So I'm tempted. Um, and then I like your your discussion and, and you know about Mamu and and Th- Thanasis, uh, you know Giannis's br- little brother or big brother, I think actually. But <clears throat> I'm afraid those two guys split. You know, if they both split ten minutes each or something. Uh, you know, that becomes a hard one uh, to to stomach. So may need to to watch that one a little bit. But uh, I'm with you on Giannis. I mean, I think he'll be the highest owned player on the on the uh, entire slate. And then for me, the guy that might sneak in there is Grayson Allen, believe it or not. Yeah, I think he's going to be a popular value play as a starter. And he should get some open looks. So he could certainly pay it off. What we're going to do here before we get to uh, game two, coach, is just uh, introduce folks to what we provide, which are full lineups here on FanDuel and Yahoo. We give out cash lineups and GPP lineups. So it's a great time to join us. Give us a try. Uh, you know, Take advantage of the work we've done in the preseason to get to know some of these value plays and just plug those lineups in and see how they do. And we'll also uh, get you coached up on you know which – contest to select uh but you know we had some big winners last year we're looking for a huge season uh so jump in with us now get a feel for how we do things go to dfscoachtalk.com and you can grab the three-day pass or the five-day pass and uh, take a look and then pick up the nba first half package hopefully we'll get off to a hot start here coach absolutely and again you know to check out what we do, I think we're unique in the industry, the way we build lineups and the way we uh, really contest selection. And we coach to that. We don't just throw players out there, play these guys. We talk about contest selection. We really focus on a lot of cash games and single entry GPPs. So, you know, we try to really look at what can we help our members uh, be successful long term, sustainability for long-term winning in DFS is what we really like to go over. And a lot of that, yes, it's the players we're talking about today and building those lineups, but where a lot of people go wrong, and we talk about it openly in our Discord, is if you're playing the wrong contests and you're not even, you know, in shouting distance of just trying to win, you know, one big contest in a wild GPP, it's hard to maintain. And we want you to be able to build a solid bankroll. And, and I think you'll find that uh, in in coming to DFS Coach Talk. So, again, like Andrew said, the three-day pass is only $10. Five-day is, is 19 And you can check us out. So we'd, we'd love to have you. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, super important for us in the algorithm, especially with it being NBA opening day. If you're enjoying this video and you appreciate it in front of our paywall, quick thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. And then a quick little comment. That combination really helps us move up the charts there. And then while you're at it, there's a little uh, bell in the upper corner there. Hit that alarm. So this way, anytime any of our podcasts post, and we do podcasts for all four of our sports, basketball, football, baseball, and golf, you'll know when they post so that you don't miss them. And we try to get these out early enough that people can catch them on their lunch hour, on their commutes to and from work. So uh, definitely hit that uh, also. But we really appreciate uh, people listening in and letting us know what they like, if they have any questions. Uh, if you want to reach out to us on Twitter, you can reach us at DFS Coach Talk. I'm at Joe Sarvati, J-O-E-S-A-R-V-A-D-I. And Andrew is at Language Olympic. Yeah, and the way the sign-up works is if you go to DFSCoachTalk.com, pick your length of membership, we'll send you an email and invite you into our Discord. And then we give out the lineups usually around 30 minutes before tip. So, you know, if you want to join us today, make sure you, you sign up by about 6, 6 p.m. Eastern and we'll get you in there. All right, coach, game two, uh, 10 o'clock tip, Golden State and the Lakers. You want to introduce this to us in terms of the line and, and some efficiency numbers? 
Absolutely. Uh, it is a 10-10 East Coast game, so we'll get basketball late night. I love it. That's my favorite. Uh, Lakers are actually favored in this game by three and a half. The totals 227 as it sits right now at betus.com.pa. So it is six and a half points lower than the first game. Uh, I do think the first game is going to be higher owned as well. But there are some nuggets in this game uh, to choose from also. Just not Denver. Look at the implied total for the Los Angeles Lakers. It's 115. Uh, Their offensive efficiency last year sunk all the way down to 17th. They did not uh, get it done. They were in the top three the whole prior year. But here's the key. The defensive efficiency rating, and we talked about this early on, they were first last year. They led the league in defensive efficiency at a 105.8. So certainly something to, to consider when you're looking at Golden State. And they've done it with you know some really good defenders. Now, is that going to change this year? They removed some of the players that were doing a good job for them getting that defensive rating uh, where it was. So that's going to be something we have to watch early on. Is there going to be uh, you know a little bit of a shift there? Because they did go more offensive in some areas in trying to build up this team. Um, pace of play, they were only 18th last year. So the showtime ball was not in play. They were in the bottom half pace-wise. They did a lot of slowing it up with uh, LeBron. Is Westbrook going to impact that? That's the big question there. You would it, you would definitely think that he will speed things up for them, uh, but you know it's yet to be seen. It, you know, in preseason, we did not really see that from uh, Westbrook. On the Golden State side, the implied total for them is one eleven point five, and I'm sorry, one oh, uh, yeah, one eleven point five. So it's it's a little bit below uh, uh, L.A., but still a, a reasonable total. And it's uh, the offensive efficiency for them last year was poor, 109.7. So they were 22nd in the league. It was really the Steph Curry or bus show for them all year. No one else really got had a big year. Wiggins was okay at times for sure. But after that, it was not pretty. Defensive efficiency, though, Golden State was the most improved uh, team in the league. They were all the way up to fifth at 109, so you saw a big improvement there. Does that affect or slow down uh, the Lakers is, is, is something we need to see. The other uh, good thing about this game, if you want to play it, is Golden State was the second fastest-paced team in the league last year at 102.9. They got that ball out and let the three fly, uh, and now that Jordan Poole has even a more uh, intense role here with this alongside of Curry, the balls will be flying short into that shot clock, and I think you'll see them in the tops. They'll probably be in the top five most of the, the year in pace. So that's sort of a breakout on the numbers. Some of them are a little uh, unusual, you, you know, that we didn't expect completely, but it does paint a bit of a picture there, uh, whether that complicates things in some areas or helps to make them clear, uh, you know, it depends on the way you want to look at it. Yeah, in terms of the injuries here, you mentioned Jordan Poole, and he's got a great opportunity with Clay still out. We've got Wiseman out and Kuminga out on the Golden State side. And then with the Lakers, we've got uh, Taylor Horton Tucker and Ariza, along with Ellington, all out. Uh, Malik Monk is probable, and Kendrick Nunn is questionable. So why don't you kick us off on that Golden State side with Poole and Curry, and, and uh, you know he's sort of like the – Temporary splash brother of Steph. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, the way Poole has played, you know, the end of last year and then preseason, I mean, that he's a stud. He, he can put up some big numbers. I'm excited for Jordan Poole this year. I think he's going to be sort of over-owned, though, because everybody's been talking about him so much. But as far as uh, the Golden State side goes, the only DRPM I'll, I'll list in this game Defensive real plus minus, again, is on the Lakers side, but it affects Golden State, so I wanted to mention it here. LeBron is 40th overall in defense. Now, a lot of people are going to say, what? But he had two years ago, you know, when they won it, he played great D. He, he continued last year playing much better D, which he had taken before that a season or two off defensively. So he can play def defense. He gets it done. He's the only guy that really – 
I think pushes the envelope here in this game uh, as far as uh, really on the positive side. Uh, on the negative side, you're, you're going to get some inconsistency from Curry. There was a lot of the year he was in the bottom portion of the RPM. Uh, it improved a little at the end, but certainly an attackable commodity. So that's the only DRPM I want to go over there. Um, the Golden State side, you know, the question is, what superstar are you going to sit today? I mean, or which, which how many? Because <laughs> mm -hmm. we already talked about how do you get away from Giannis? Very difficult. Harden or Durant? You know, both or neither. So that puts you in a situation. Now, when you come into this game, it's really three more guys, Curry, LeBron, and Davis, in my opinion. So you've got now a very difficult six uh, all-stars to choose from that could break the slate. And what do you think, Andrew? Maybe you get two of them. I don't even know if you can get three. I think you can get three, uh, okay. depending on how many value plays you want to go. If you go more of that stars and scrubs. But yep. there are a lot to choose from. It is. It's hard. I mean, a two-game slate, you think, you know, you got a few standouts and then you can build around them. But, yeah, I mean, I'd love to get three. I'm going to try to do that. I just don't want to scrape the bottom of the barrel with a guy that's not going to get in. But I'm with you, and I'm going to try to make it work. But Curry, certainly playable. You know, is he going to get uh, any Westbrook defense, you know, which isn't the greatest? Kent Bazemore, who, you know, could get minutes uh, – in this game, it, it split with Monk, he'll probably do a decent job. But Curry, he looks great. I love the fact that we're all talking about Jordan Poole, you know, in the industry a bit. That sort of takes, you know, a little bit of the, the focus, not much, but enough that people know they have to guard Poole. And I think it does create a situation where both Curry and Poole are playable because it opens Curry up just a little bit. And then pool is half the price of, of Curry. So, you know, you can look at that uh, combination, you know, especially if you're only, you know, going with one of the Brooklyn stars, you know, a Curry pool combination isn't bad. Uh, then that takes us to the rest of, of the Golden State side. You know, Wiggins, who had the most, he was the most improved player, in my opinion, defensively in the league. He went from a very poor defender to uh, somewhat of a shutdown defender at times. And so whatever Kerr has done to coach him up, uh, you know, he is he plays both ways. It's just offensively at his price at 6.2, he just he can miss the mark at times. And he is going to get some of that really tough interior defense. When you're talking about James, Davis, Jordan, and then Howard, I mean, I would not want to go in the paint or anywhere near it. So – uh, you know, he is a slasher Wiggins. He will knock down a three, but he gets a lot of bucket slash into the hoop. And that's a real formidable group of powerhouse Lakers in the interior. So a little worried there. Uh, I'm not a Draymond Green guy. I'll admit it. I know he burns me sometimes, but he's 6.8 K. He's always pretty expensive. And you just, it's so frustrating watching him because you just don't know, you know, if he's going to have one of his two point, uh, real point kind of games, and you're just scrambling to try to get him to his number. Uh, and I know sometimes he does. He's a triple-double uh, threat every time he steps on the floor. So I know you like him more than I do, but I just have never been in his corner. Uh, Looney, you know, uh, you mentioned him earlier, and I get it. He's 4.1. you got to find value if you want to get these studs in there. The fact that, you know, they're shorthanded at the bigs right now because Wiseman is still out. Uh, you know, he's going to get minutes. The question is, can he do much against the that formidable front line that I mentioned about the Lakers? I'm a little bit afraid to go there. So uh, after that, the bench, to me, it's hit or miss. I don't particularly like the Warriors bench. Uh, they have Porter Jr., Otto Porter Jr. They wish it was Michael Porter, but uh, Otto Porter, who's, you never know. I mean, he could be a decent guy, but he's 5.3. If he was 3.5, maybe, uh, but not at that price. Uh, Iguodala, you can't count on anymore. You know, Damian Lee will get decent minutes. He's probably going to get the most minutes for a guard off the bench, but I don't know if you risk it. He could certainly, uh, you know, be a good play, more of a GPP style. And then you're going to get, you know, there's a lot of guys that may get minutes. And then I, I'm interested to hear your take on these guys because I'm not going to play any of them, but I can see 
somebody making a point of it, and that's Bielitsa, Juan Toscano Anderson, who's dropped the Anderson, by the way. He's just Juan Toscano now. You know, those guys are 3.4. Chris Chioza at 3, who, again, if, if Lee doesn't get all those backup minutes, Chioza could get some. And then a rookie that I, I'm super high on, I know both of us really like him, is Moses Moody at 3.2. Those guys are all potential, but I just don't know if they can make it for me until I make sure that Kerr has them in the rotation. Yeah, so uh, I'll start with that bench uh, since you finished there. And I do think Damian Lee will get the most minutes probably of the guards. They don't really have a lot of depth there or experience. So to me, the X factor is Moses Moody, who is really uh, kind of a wing player, 6'5", but he can handle it. He can initiate the pick and roll. He's got some versatility. I really like his potential because he can shoot it and he can defend. He's got great length and he's ultra cheap. So he's a GPP option for me here. And I'm probably not interested in the rest of the bench like you. Porter Jr., a little bit overpriced. Iguodala and Bielitsa are just going to be uh, GPP plays, I think, for a while. Uh, that's kind of who they are. Um, so I don't think you need to go there on this slate. But with the starting group, uh, I, I, I really do like Jordan Poole here. You know, 4,800 and 49. To me, uh, he's locked in on both sides for me. And I, I think he will be popular, but I'm, I'm fine with it. That's, that's the biggest misprice on the slate, I think. I mean, look at that preseason game he had this year. 22 minutes. He scored 30 points, five yeah. rebounds, five assists. Yeah. You know, he's really stepping up and getting opportunities. You know, if he's had games where he has taken more shots than Steph. And like you said, he's half the price. So uh, that's the the place I'm most excited about investing in, in, on this Golden State side. Uh, you know, I know Steph really lit it up in that one preseason game. So he's ready to go. But with the pace and the defense of the Lakers, you know, he's likely to miss out from, from my primary lineup. And then with the the forwards for Golden State, I'm not too thrilled about any of them on this slate. Looney, you know, I'm never thrilled about him, but he can be a, a punt play that you at least feel good that he'll get 20 minutes. And he can get a double-double, but he can also have a, you know, a 10-point fantasy night. So he's he's got a pretty low floor, uh, but he is a value play to consider. So, um, you know, again, in general, I just, I, I probably will have, one or two Golden State guys, uh, but I do like game one better. Uh, but let's look at the Lakers side here. And what we're anticipating here for the starting lineup is Westbrook, Bazemore, LeBron, Anthony Davis, and then DeAndre Jordan. Uh, I'm not certain about that. We'll see here when they announce it because uh, Melo started one of these games against Golden State in the preseason. So they could go smaller. I actually don't think it matters too much. I, I don't think the minutes will uh, shift too much one way or the other for those guys, and I'm not too interested in them. Right. Um, and since I'm not too interested in the Golden State bigs, I'm not too worried about who's going to be defending them. So with the other guys here, I mean, the big question, Coach, is Westbrook, LeBron, AD, how are they going to fit together? Three monster players in DFS with incredible upside. Uh, they haven't played much, and I think it's 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 a definite work in progress, and it's one situation that I'd like to just sit back and watch and see how it plays out. I, I'm really not too fired up about playing any of those guys tonight. Um, <clears throat> before I hit the bench, what do you think about those big three? Well, I'll tell you, the, to me, the biggest story in preseason watching the games, literally the biggest story for me, was how poor Russell Westbrook looked. I mean... In those, he looked totally out of sorts. He didn't look like he had any idea what was going on. He was not fitting into anything that they were doing. So, you know, that you talk about a, a work in, in, in process, uh, you know, that Vogel's got to get done there. I have no idea how that's going to work out. I mean, I wouldn't touch Russell Westbrook at 8.6 with a 10 foot pole. Now, you, you're talking about a guy that has averaged a triple double for his career pretty much. I mean, he's yes, he has that tremendous potential, but 
I just don't see anything fitting right now. And that may develop over time. I mean, they're veterans. They'll figure it out, I'm sure. But to start out the season, he's a, a million percent fade for me. You know, I'm just tempted, though, on the LeBron and Anthony Davis side. You know, I am with you, though. I think the fact that they brought in DeAndre Jordan, who was on the scrap heap with the Nets, he didn't even get in any games in the playoffs for them. So he was, you know, it, was he going to be bought out, retire, whatever? And here he is possibly starting. But the fact that they have Jordan and Howard, I mean, you got to be kidding me. So I'm not wanting either one of those guys because I've got to think they're going to split the exact same stats as far as defending and rebounding. But my question back to you, because it, it answers, you know, sort of answers what you asked me is, do those two guys and their huge presence in the paint, does it detract from Anthony Davis? Does he not get as many rebounds or putbacks uh, or even blocks because those other guys are stepping up? Um, that's my concern. So I want to get your response on Davis. But for me, the only guy I would consider today for the Lakers is LeBron. Uh, I don't want to pay 9K for him, but he is the guy uh, because of what I just stated that that I think is – is the most playable, but my, my red flag is concern is on, is Davis going to be affected by the other bigs? Russell's already sitting in the pine for me. Yeah. I would also play LeBron out of these three, if I were going to play one, but the concern with him is does Westbrook take away from his assist total, uh, you know, his usage and does LeBron take a bit of a step back to try to fit Westbrook in, even if he doesn't consciously try to take a step back, you know, Westbrook's going to jam his way in there and yeah. and play his game. So I, I just don't like <clears throat> the beginning of the season outlook here for these Lakers without more shooters around these guys. They don't have right. the shooting that they need. Right. So it's, it's going to be a slog fest. And <clears throat> it's funny that you talk about fading Westbrook at eight, six, which is something we never would have said last year. We would have never. said a hundred percent lock <laughs> at 8,600, but uh, I'm, I'm ready to fade him as well. And I agree. Yeah, AD with these other bigs, we saw last year, if he started at the five, you know, he gobbled up a lot more of the rebounds. But when right. he's the four and he doesn't feel the need to to be that guy in the paint, he'll he'll take it, <clears throat> he'll take it off yeah. and <clears throat> play more on the perimeter. So uh, I'm ready to fade him as well. So let's go to this bench here. And we do have some some big question marks here with the news. We've got uh, Malik Monk probable with the groin. Now there is one shooter that they need, so they need him healthy. We'll we'll follow that news up to lock. Kendrick yeah. Nunn also questionable with the ankle. Those are some big pieces of news for me because if they're both out, then the guards that I'm looking at, we've got Rondo, of course, but then my other potential value play comes into play, coach. That's Austin Reeves. Minimum price on both sites, six five rookie out of Oklahoma. This guy looked good in the preseason. He shot it with confidence from deep made some plays defensively, got out in transition, and he played enough with LeBron and Westbrook that they're used to, uh, you know, playing with him. And, you know, after LeBron passes to a guy like that and he hits a couple threes, he's going to remember that, right? I mean, he needs, right. he wants shooters that he can kick it to, that he can trust. And if it's, if it's Reeves and he's played as many as 30 minutes in the preseason here, then I, I like that as a GPP play, but we just have to know about a, a monk and none. And then uh, before I kick it back to you, I might as well hit Dwight here again because you know I do like him. He had a game in the preseason against this Golden State team, 23 points and 12 rebounds off the bench. Yeah. And part of that is because look at those bigs, quote unquote, on Golden State. Bielitsa is the big, you know, and, and Toscano, they're not going to prevent Dwight from doing his thing. So, yeah, Dwight may only get 20 minutes, but uh, 4,000 on FanDuel looks pretty good to me. So uh, he might actually be my favorite play on the Lakers side because I'm just not too interested in that team tonight. You know, it, it is – Lakers are one of the most confusing teams going in. You would think, hey, you know, they put this team together. Okay, we, we know what we're doing. But from a DFS standpoint, you know, all these veterans that need minutes and, and have played so much, I mean, it's how do you figure it all out? I think it's somewhat has to play out. And, you know, anybody that says they, they know exactly how this rotation is going to work, 
and how they're going to produce is, is giving you a line of baloney because uh, it has to develop here. I'm, I'm with you. I mean, Carmelo Anthony, when he's in there, he's going to take a bunch of shots. So that's going to take usage away from guys to add to your point about, you know, Russ taking some stuff from LeBron assist wise, of course, with Rondo there, you know, when he's out there, yep. he's running the point. I think the, the guy you, you keyed on was the guy to talk about. And that's Malik Monk. He's 4.5. He's probable now. So he's been upgraded from questionable probable. I think he plays and I think they desperately need his outside shooting. He might be the value guy that I go to here uh, once he is uh, cleared and confirmed for playing. Uh, Kendrick Nunn, I doubt, is going to play. He's questionable, but he uh, he had rolled an ankle pretty good. I don't think he's going to uh, run tonight. I, I love your enthusiasm on Reeves. I just don't know if I have the the stones to go there just yet, but he may be a guy that, that gets in that rotation. So, yeah, man, I as far as the Lakers go, you would think, wow, let's load up on Davis, Jordan, Howard, the bigs, because Golden State has no bigs, really. Um, but I just don't like the splitting of minutes and the usage. And, you know, to have both Jordan and Howard with Davis in the middle, it's like, are you kidding me? I mean, they ought to just – I don't know how you ever score in the paint against that team, but – yeah, I'm I'm more so with you. I like the first game a little bit better. I like a few of the Golden State guys better. You know, it could be, and so we have some big Laker fans in our in our uh, membership group. They're not going to be loving hearing this, but I'm with you. I'm going to fade a lot of Lakers tonight. Well, it's it's going to be a lot of fun here with these four teams on opening night. Hopefully, that got everybody ready for both sites. Uh, we're excited to bring these podcasts to you for the NBA season and just absolutely crush it. So again, jump in with us tonight. If you want to try out the lineups, dfscoachdoc.com. Uh, sign up there. We will invite you into our Discord with an email. Coach, any final thoughts here for opening night? No, just appreciate everybody listening in. We went a little deeper and longer today because we're so fired up. It's only a two-gamer. Tomorrow's an 11-gamer. So just so you know, you know, if you check in with us every day and listen, we will sure, sort certainly shorten those uh, previews, but we will go game by game and touch on everything. We want to make sure you're prepared and ready. So uh, you don't have to worry about it being a two and a half hour pod tomorrow, <laughs> but uh, we will touch on every game similar to the way we did today, but great to be back partner. I, I mean, this, this, you know, year three or so with, with doing the NBA uh, from the jump start and it being normal and, and great and uh, regular, and it's going to be fantastic. So Look forward to a great year. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, thumbs up. Uh, hit that subscribe button, a quick comment, and we'd really appreciate it. So thanks Absolutely. for listening. Yeah, definitely. Appreciate it. Great start here. Can't wait for tonight. Uh, so thanks for tuning in, everybody. On behalf of the coach and the rest of the DFS Coach Talk team, I'm Andrew Hansen. We'll see you next time as we look to crush it in DFS.